Begin the Quran that Masech the Shabbos Dav Samaches. We begin on the bottom of Samach Zayim and Beis. Five lines up at the bottom of the Yamid. We begin the seventh parak Masech the Shabbos parak Klal Gadol, which discusses all the halachas, the malachas of Shabbos. So we, we, our share is caused by the Bekalzich and Yecheskel Torah any time. Daf Achaim and the Zuma Elam. We're going to begin Perik Gadol, which discusses in the introductory Mishnah a concept, a, a more general concept. That if somebody violates one of Lama Tes Malachas, which we're going to discuss in the next mission, all the 39 prohibited activities on Shabbos, so if it's done b'mezid, so then there's a chiv misa. With Aiden, with Hasra, then there's a skila. If it's uh, without Aiden, then it's uh, a chorus, but there's a, uh, there's a death penalty. If someone does it by mistake, so then there's a chiv of a carbon chatas. Now, regarding a carbon chatas, our mission is going to be discussing that there could be different situations that he can be chayv a single carbon for many violations, and at times he can be chayv multiple carbonas for many violations. Additionally, the concept is going to be dependent on when a person once knew about the concept of Shabbos, but then forgot, and possibly that might be different than when the person never knew about the concept of Shabbos. Some of the other concepts discussed is the concept known as Av Malacha, which are forbidden the Deiraisa to be done on Shabbos, and there are Tailadis that are similar to the Av Malacha that are also forbidden in the Deiraisa. Additionally, the Halacha of, of Shviyas, during the Shemiti, one is not permitted to work the land of Eretz Yisrael, which one could work all the six years, but on the seventh year, one cannot do any work. Another Halacha that's going to be brought up is the Halacha of Maiserishin, which every single year, a person has to give 10% of his produce to a lady. There's Maiser Shani, which 10% then has to be taken up to Yushalayim or Redeemed and that money taken up to your shrine, and then there's Maeser Ani on certain years, the third and the sixth year, then the tenth is given to a nun. Usually, the halach of, con- of pay is going to come up, which is the corn of the field that has to be left for the poor people to take. Usually, the famous terminology known as Tinik is going to be introduced in this daf, which literally means to say a child that was taken to captivity, Lebena Akim, which that means to say that a Jewish child who was raised amongst the Gentiles with no knowledge about Judaism and his halachic status in regards to the halach of our Mishnah. So we begin the new parak, parak Klal Gadol, which our mission starts over Klal Gadol Amr B'Shabbos. So there was a major rule that was said regarding the laws of Shabbos. The Gemara is going to explain why is it called a Klal Gadol. But essentially, these are three degrees of Shagig, three different cases of Shagig, and our mission is going to describe them in detail. So the mission begins. Case number one. Kal HaSheikh Iker Shabbos. Someone forgot the essence of Shabbos, meaning he thinks there is no such thing as Shabbos in the Torah. He doesn't have a clue that there is such a thing as Shabbos. Malachas Shabbos is and he does many malachas. He's toichen. He's he's he does haitzah. He does havara. He does all these many malachas. On many Shabbos for many years, he's doing malachas. Says the Mishnah in Chayav Alachatisachas for the liability for him to bring a carbon because he was unaware uh, that he did anything wrong. He has to bring one carbon chatz. Now the concept of this, as Rashi brings, is a Gemara later on of Samach Tesem Abayz that learns out. We have one pasuk that says Shabbos when it's told about uh, many violations. It says in the singular the word Shabbos, which tells us that there's one Shmira for many Shabbos. Then there's another pasuk that says Shabbos. It says in the plural that there's, there's there's a Shmira for every single Shabbos, which means to say that at times, as we mentioned in the introduction, you could be viol- you could be liable many chatois for many violations, and at times you could be liable for one chattis for many violations. So and that explains Rashi, it's logical to say that when there's one shmira for many shabbases, is like in the case that we're describing here in the Mishnah. Because ultimately the guy made one mistake. The one mistake was, he didn't know there's such a thing as Shabbos. He didn't make many mistakes. He didn't know that this is a malach, he didn't know this was Shabbos. No, he had no clue about Shabbos for years and years in his life, which we'll discuss that concept that's very much related to the concept we know as Tinik Shanizba. But here we're talking about a guy forgot. Maybe he was brought up as a Jew, but then he went through difficult times. He forgot to was such a thing as Shabbos. Now, the, what's the halachic obligation of a carbon? A carbon is on an error. When you do something deliberate, there's no carbon, generally. It's generally then there's a chiv of miso or malchus. When you do it by mistake, that's what creates the liability of a carbon. You had one mistake, so there's one carbon. The one mistake is you forgot the essence of Shabbos. Of course, you do malachis on every single Shabbos because you made this one mistake. So that's one case. Case number two. Hayidei Iker Shabbos. No, the guy knows there's such a thing as Shabbos. He knows he now do malachas on Shabbos. But, yeah, and Shabbos is harbi. He did many malachas on many Shabbos. However, his Shigiga Shabbos, as we're going to describe that term in the coming Dathan, which means that his error was regarded to Shabbos, that he forgot that today was Shabbos. 
How do we know that someone that he forgot that today was Shabbos? Because the safe of the third case that we're going to describe shortly says, Hayadeya Shehu Shabbos. If he knows that this day is Shabbos, the inference is that this middle case is tomorrow where he doesn't know that today is Shabbos. Now, he did many malachas on many Shabbos in such a situation, and he never had a clue in between that he ever did anything wrong because he didn't know that that day was Shabbos. So that says the mission this middle case for what we're calling Hayadeya Iker Shabbos. He knows the essence of Shabbos. But he just doesn't know that today is Shabbos, and every single week he has no clue that that's the day of Shabbos. Chayav al Shabbos for Shabbos. So he's going to be Chayav for one Chattas for every single Shabbos. So let's say years and years, he, he didn't know that that was Shabbos. He knows there's such a thing as Shabbos. He learned about it in, in day school. He learned about that there's something as Shabbos, not the Malachas. Fine, I'm not going to be Malachas Shabbos. I had no clue that that day was Shabbos. So although he did many Malachas, only we had one Chattas for every single Shabbos. Now Rashi explains the difficulty. Generally, the Halacha concept is, is that if you do something in one lapse of awareness, which means that you didn't become aware, and then you did the same sin again and again, you only be liable for one chathas. The, the, the liability for another carbon for the same sin is only if you made the mistake, you became aware, then you made the mistake again, then you'll be liable again. But if it's in the same lapse of awareness, then you'll only be chayv one. And here, he had no clue between from Shabbos to Shabbos to Shabbos to Shabbos, so why is he chayv every single Shabbos? So on that explains Rashi that actually the days in between are considered, the Gemara Krisa says, a yediyah lechalik. It is considered an awareness to separate. Now, there's a machalik, Rashi and Tesis, how to explain that Gemara in Krisa. Rashi says, oh, come on, even if you didn't hear about uh, in the, uh, that it was Shabbos, it's impossible that in the intermediate days, on the, six, the next six days, that you didn't hear that that day was Shabbos. And therefore, you obviously became aware that that was Shabbos, and therefore, you're going to be liable. So therefore, your primary liability was because you didn't know that it was Shabbos. You became aware in between that it was Shabbos. Tis disagrees. Tis says no, not, not necessarily. Tis means a few rise. Says the Gzeis HaKasa. Tis says the fact that there are intermediate days, the days of Heter, of Malacha, that separates it into different actions. And therefore, Tis just says that it's Gzeis HaKasa, that you're going to be liable for every single Shabbos, even though you were you unaware. But one thing is, every single Shabbos, you made one mistake. What was the one mistake you made? You didn't know that today was Shabbos. But regarding all the malachas that you did every single Shabbos, you're not going to be liable for each and every malacha because, like we said, every Shabbos was one mistake. Because you didn't make a mistake regarding malachas. You knew malachas were forbidden. You just didn't know that they were Shabbos. So therefore, says the middle case of the Mishnah, you can be chayev one chattas for every single Shabbos. Because you did not, you did not, make, you didn't make a mistake about the essence of Shabbos. You knew the essence of Shabbos. You just didn't know that that day was Shabbos. So every single Shabbos, you made that mistake. That was one mistake that you made. I did many malachas, but that wasn't the error. The carbon is in the error that you made. The error was in Shabbos, and that was one mistake you made every single Shabbos. Case number three. Yeshu Shabbos. The person knows that today is Shabbos. So different in that sense, he's like deliberate. But again, not, you're not amazed because you did many malachas on every single Shabbos by mistake. But Shabbos is harbor, many single Shabbos. Now, the person didn't know that these malachas were forbidden to be done. And he knew it was Shabbos. And this actually is, a more, I guess, the more common of all the three cases where a person had no clue that, you know, I'll do that on Shabbos. So he did it many years on many Shabbos. He did this malacha many times. So he knows it's Shabbos. And he just didn't know these things are forbidden to be done. And that says the Mishnah Chayav al Kol would continue to talk about some of Av malacha malacha. So he's going to be liable for every single primary category of every malacha, one chattas. Which basically means for every malacha that the person does. If he was doing toichin and he was doing uh, hitzah, he was doing all these different things. He didn't know that, oh, that's really forbidden, that's also forbidden. So each malacha that he did, he's going to be for one chattas. Now, also when he did this for many years, you tell me the five malachas that he violated over the years, he's only going to be for five chattas? You know how many how many years he did this? Yeah, only Michal for five Chattas, because those are the five Av Malachas he violated. Why? Although he repeated as many Shabbosas over many years, let's say, but it still was one mistake. Why is it one mistake? Because like we said before, here he didn't know about it. He never became aware of it. He never had another lapse of awareness. He had no clue for years. No one told me that that's forbidden to be done. Now, regarding the previous case, regarding the Shkoga of Shabbos, that Rashi says, you could say that the intermediate days is considered an awareness, even though he really wasn't aware. Machlik's Rashi says, why? So why is it considered as it is? But Rashi says, you definitely found that intermediate days, so therefore that's going to be considered a yudil achalak, and therefore the next Shabbos is a new liability. But regarding making a mistake of Malachas, we don't say that, that the intermediate days 
are going to be like as if he became aware. Because Rashi says, no, the only way you can become aware of the Malach is if you sit down in front of your Rav and he teaches Hilchah Shabbos, so he's going to tell you what's right and what's wrong. Like the Chabbat Chaim says in introduction, it's impossible that you're not going to be unaware about certain things on Shabbos unless you sit down and you learn the Allah. So, so the fact that this is three years later, you're going to be the same ignoramus regarding the laws of Shabbos that you always won. There's no Yidil Lachal. Now, so therefore, the, 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 you're not going to be, as in the previous case, exempt with one Chattas for every single Shabbos, because like we said, in this third case, the error wasn't regarding Shabbos. He knew it was Shabbos. The error was in the Malachas, and therefore that, even if that happened on one Shabbos, when this person violated five Malachas, there's many errors over here. It wasn't one error you didn't know was Shabbos, you knew it was Shabbos. There was in the Malacha. You didn't know that was grinding, you didn't know that was tearing, you didn't know all those different things, and therefore you can for each and every Malacha. Now, the Gemara later on, the Ayn Malaf learns that there's a Pasuk that says, Achas Mehena. Achas tells us, uh, Hena tells us that sometimes you can Mikhaev, Hena in the plural, for every single time you do Malacha. And then Achas tells us that sometimes you can Mikhaev only one for every single Malacha. That actually explains, that's the last two cases that we just explained in the Mishnah. It's logical, it's logical to say that the liability for every single Malacha is in what we call Zodin Shabbos, and Shigas Malachas. So we're saying these terminologies because they're going to come up in important terminologies to get. Zod and Shabbos means say, regarding the fact that it's Shabbos, that you're delivered, meaning that you know it's Shabbos, but your Shigaga, your error was in the Malachas. So you made many mistakes. Your mistakes were all in every single one of these Malachas. That's when it's going to be what's called Mehena, that you can be for every single Malacha. Then, when's the case of the exemption that you can be chayv only one Karmel Chatzas for the Shabbos, is what's called Shigaya Shabbos with Zod Malachas, which... You knew that these malachas were forbidden, but you didn't know that today is Shabbos. Where that's one error of Shabbos, and that's really like the middle case, which we said that uh, if a person if a person uh, knows the essence of Shabbos, but he forgot that today is Shabbos, he made one mistake, that would be the case that would be chayim, only one chattas for every single Shabbos. Now, we continue on the, 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 the Mishnah, on the, on the top of the Sanachas and Alf, that... Uh, an Av Malacha that we picked, and now in this case, we said, okay, so every single Shabbos, the person did many things, like in the kitchen, he used to do certain things, and then regarding opening up things, he had no clue that's forbidden to be done on Shabbos. So Rashi explains, which goes into the next part of the Mishnah, that this that we're picking Yichayv for every single Av Malacha is not coming to exclude Tehladas. It's not, it's not like you're not going to be Chayv for every Tehladas also that you do, as long as it's a Tehladas of a different Av. Because what we're coming to exclude here is if let's say you have two Teladas of the same Av, or an Av and its Telada, that's what the Mishnah is coming to exclude, that you only Michayev for one of them, which actually is what the next part of the Mishnah comes to tell us. Ha'isa Malachas Harbi, if someone does many Malachas on, 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 on Me'in Malacha Achas, that's similar to, to it's a semblance of the same Malacha, like for example the case of two Teladas of one Av. Many times you could have uh, one thing that, that's a derivative of, of, the, of the same Av Malacha, it's related to the same idea. So then, in Chayv Then you're only going to be liable for one Karma Chatzas, because that's the same concept as doing the same th- sin two times in the same lapse of awareness. But like we said, you're not, the, the, the liability of different Chatzas in the same lapse of awareness that you never became aware is only if you did separate different types of sins that are not similar one to the other, like many different Malachas. Or let's say, like we said, if a different Shabbos is regarding the Shigasa of Shabbos. But if you did the same Malach itself, in many times when you never became aware, you only have one Chatzah, because it was one mistake that you made. You have to make a new mistake. A new mistake could even be another action, or the same action, but after you became aware. But if it's the same lapse of awareness, what's called, and the same, I never knew. So there's three years, you never knew, there was one mistake that you made. So if it's both of the same Av Malach, it's considered the same action, and therefore you're only going to have one Karma Chatzah. So again, just to... Clarify again regarding these three cases of the Mishnah. Hashachich Iker Shabbos. Someone forgot the essence of Shabbos and violated many Shabbases because only one Karmachatis for his whole life. Haidei Iker Shabbos. Someone knows the essence. He knows the essence of Shabbos. But he didn't realize that today was Shabbos because only one Karmachatis and it should say on every single Shabbos. Then there's Haidei Yeshu Shabbos. If someone knows that it's Shabbos but violated many Malachas, brings one Karmachatis for each of. And then, but if you violate many Teladas from the same Av, then he brings only one Karma Chatzis because that's considered one violation in one lapse of awareness. Nothing more begins. It says, okay, my time at Tanik Chagadu. Why did when we opened up this Mishnah, which we spoke about these three different cases of Shagaga with different Halachas, why do we call it a great rule? It says, so the Gemara has a few different approaches. 
it's because we want to say on a later Mishnah, which is on the Ayin Himid Beis. Oid Klal Acher, we said, and there's another rule regarding the laws of Shabbos. Now there, in that Mishnah, we only included two halachas. One what's called if something is fit to be stored away, and then one if it's not fit to be stored away, like we'll see that that's related to the Malacha of Hitzah. So that only talks about two halachas in its Klal, in its rule. And here we mention more than two Klalas in our Mishnah, so since it, it has more satanic law, gadol, because it's more detailed, we're going to call it a great rule. And the truth is that answer would make sense because of Rabbi Shvi Nami. In the Mishnah Mesech the Shvi is on, this, on the seventh parak, it also mentions klal gadol. And why do we mention that Mishnah klal gadol, great rule? From the Kabbalah Mishnah, because they're also in the halachas of Shemitah, we also have a lady Mishnah that says, Oy klal achad, there's another rule. And Tanakh klal gadol, therefore it calls it a great rule because it has more details than it has later on. The problem with that is, is that Valgabi Maiser, but regarding the laws of Maiser, as brought in the first paragraph of Mesechtas Maiser, the Ketani Klal Acher, there it also says, a later Mishnah, another rule, Vlai Tani Klal Gadol, and it doesn't call it a great rule. So why, if it's going to have a, a, a later Mishnah, a later Klal, that's not as detailed, although by Shvi says that, but the problem by Maiser is not introduced into the term Klal Gadol, then, then, why, then why wouldn't it call Klal Gadol if the idea is a later Klal has less? Maiser also should have that. So now the Gemara continues, Zomer Bisa Barab, and he says, you're right, okay, Shabbos or Shvi is, by Shabbos we find, and by Shemitah we find, the Isbu Avis. There's primary categories, like by the laws of Shabbos, there's 39 Av Malachas that were necessary in the Mishkan. And you have a Teladis, you have derivatives that are similar to each one, that's considered its, it's derivative. Like for example, uh, you, you have a certain Av Malacha, let's say, watering the plants, it's going to be a derivative of, of Zereya. So you have different Av and Teladis. Now so do you have by the laws of Shemitah. You have Av, primary categories, which are planting, reaping, pruning, and harvesting, which are written in the Torah regarding Shemitah. Then you have derivatives, which are all the other work that a person does in the field, in the vineyard, as the Gemara says, might cut, and the Alf. They're all included in the prohibited activity to be done on Shemitah. So therefore, Tanakadol. That's why we said it's great, because it has other Santelavs. Now, Meiser, the less of the Santelavs, and, and that's why, in contrast to Meiser, which doesn't have av- 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 Avantelada, as Tais explains in regards to Malacha. So they turn the Kal Gadol, never doesn't call it a great rule. The Gemara has a difficulty with that too. Because the Bar Kapara, in his, the Tani he taught in his Bryce, the Bar Kapara had his own Bryces. There were different, uh, uh, different uh, groupings of, of that had their, their text of Bryces. So he, in his Bryce, he actually taught Kal Gadol by Meiser. He actually had Kal Gadol by Meiser. So then the question is, okay, then my Abbas and my Talad is Ikka. He had the phrase of Kal Gadol with Meiser, that the problem, but now it wouldn't make sense, there's no Talad over there. So why would we use Kal Gadol if you're saying that's the reason why we're calling Kal Gadol? So it says the Gemara, El Allah, hang the time, or rather, you're right. It's not the reason. It's not because of Abbas and Talad. Rather, it's something that says regarding it a rule, and its punishment is more than something else that also has a rule. So in this context, we call it Gadol, as the Gemara explains. Gadol Anshay Shal Shabbos. The punishment of the liability of Shabbos, the Yosem Yishal Shabbos, is more expansive than that as it relates to Shemitah. So we're going to call Shabbos Klal Gadol in contrast to the laws of Shemitah. Why? Because the evil of Shabbos, we find the laws of Shabbos, that Isa, the prohibition of Shabbos applies, Bein Betalish, where there's something that was detached from before Shabbos, for example, grinding or kneading. Those are things that are even things that were detached from before Shabbos. And Bein Bimachubur, or it even applies to something that was attached when Shabbos started which is, 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 is kaitzer, you have many malachas applying to things that are attached. So, Isa, it applies by, 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 it applied by both cases. Now, the Yilu Shvi is where, in, in regards to Shemitah, the Talash Lassa, it does not apply to things that were detached before the, law, before the, the seventh year started. The Mechuber, only something that was attached when the, when, the, when the seventh year started, that's where Isa, that doesn't apply. But something that was detached before Shemitah doesn't apply. So then we're going to call Shabbos Klal Gadol because it's greater than a different Klal that, that applies to the laws of Shemitah. And so too, but Gadol and Shash Hashvis. We find by the laws of Shemitah we call it Klal Gadol because greater is the punishment, more expansive that of Shemitah, Yisim and Amaisa, more than applies to that of Maisa. Because the Ilo Shvi is because in regards to the laws of Shemitah, Isa, Bein Bemeichel, Adam, it applies to the, to the food of humans. And Bein Bemeichel, Lehem, it applies to the food of animals. Because like the Pasad in Birka Chafei, with the Hem Tuchav L'chaya, it says, it talks about the laws of Shemitah as it applies to food for animals. The Ilo Maisa, but regards to Maisa, Bemeichel, Adam, Isa. Maisa only applies to the food of people, but Bemeichel, Lehem, Alessa, does not apply to the food of animals. Because as Rashi explains biblically, really, Maisa only applies to Dug and Tish Only applies to grain, wine, and oil. 
Now, the rabbis came along, they instituted that even fruit trees and vegetables, but those things that are Michael Adam, that are human fruit, applies the laws of Maisim. As we're actually going to quote the mission later on, the cultural eichel, bechul, it's only things that are fruit items that are edible for humans. That's considered the laws of the Maisim, you have to give a type, but not for animal food. And therefore, again, so Malacha Shabbos apply even to items that are talish, in contrast to Hilfa Shavis, apply only to items that are mechubur. So to the laws of Shemitah apply even to Michael, Ad- Michael Behemoth, and the laws of Maisim apply only to Michael Adam. Now, says the Gemara, well, the Barka part, the Tony Klaal Gadol by Meiser, now according to Barka part, that he taught Klaal Gadol by Meiser. It also makes sense. Why? Because Gadol and Shishol Meiser, greater is the punishment of Meiser, Yesem Mishal Peah, it's more expensive than the laws of Peah, which is leaving uh, uh, some of the produce at the end of the field for the poor people. Because the Ilo Meiser, whereas we find by the laws of Meiser region, that Isa B'te'ena, that they apply by figs, the Yerik, and to vegetables, uh, rabbinically, the ilu peya, but regards to the laws of peya, less of betain of the yerik, it does not apply to figs and to vegetables. So therefore, that's what we're saying. The stringency hilchas ma'is apply even to tain of the yerik, whereas hilchas peya, as we're going to explain right now, we see in the understanding of the mission of the peya that it does not apply to those two things. Would we find this? Because it's not the learning mission of the peya that says klal amr bepeya. They said the following rule regards to the corner of the field which you leave over the produce for the poor people. It says by peya katsir the reaping. Now, just like by reaping, is designated that it, it, it generally refers to something that has all these different characteristics, like the Bryce says in Taras Kayanim, which is generally things like rain. So that's where the laws of pay would apply to, which are koshu eichel. It's anything that has, that's, that's a, a food item, meaning it's edible. The nishmer is protected. And the gedulim and the aritz, and the growth is from the ground. Now, that is, there's two more criteria. The ketasek ha'achas has to be something that's gathered one time, at one time in the year. Umachnis lekim, and you also store it away to, to last. Those things are chayiv bepeah. Now, the, the Gemara explains, what are these uh, criterion of the laws of peah? So, eichel, when we say that it has to be an edible food, that's lemaute safiche, it's coming to exclude the aftergrowth of satis, which is wod, bekeitze, and matter, which these are types of herbs that are meant for dying. That, now, Rashi explains why do we use specifically the aftergrowth. Why specifically aftergrowth? Is because we don't generally uh, gather and pluck these things in the year that they're planted. Rather, only after four or five years, when then the roots spread out on the ground, and then they get better like that, and the root is the primary thing that's used for dying, that we call it the aftergrowth, because it, it grows for all those years. Now, why do we pick specifically these two uh, plants of the woad and the, and the matter, and not some other species that are not edible? Is because... The, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the laws of Shemitah, we explain that it, these things actually do have the laws of Shemitah. So we pick it over here that, in contrast, by Peya Meiser, it doesn't have. But you're right, it's really anything that's inedible that the Allah is going to be, and that there's no obligation to pay on it. Then we say that the Nishma, that it has to be something that's guarded, is Lumute Hefker. It comes to include if something was Hefker, then it's actually put from the laws. If you let you leave your field open, whoever wants to take, then it's actually exempt from the laws of Peya. And the gedulim in the arts that, that we say has to grow from the ground is the mute kmenu patris comes to include mushrooms and truffles, where although it looks like it's growing from the ground, it actually grows from the from the ear, and therefore it doesn't have the uh, halachic obligation of peya. Then we said ulikitase kaachas that it has to be gathered at one time. That's the mute teena. These are the two things that we said that peya is more stringent than uh, it's less stringent than meiser. Uh, when we say gathered at one time, it's coming to exclude figs because figs are they we, they're plucked many times. It could be even day after day. They don't they don't ripen at the same time, and therefore you're not picking them. You're not harvesting at one time. Umachnis lekim and it only has obligation of peya if you also store you bring it into store that it should last. That's the mudi yarek that comes to include certain vegetables like turnips and leeks that they don't last for a long time. If you can store them, those yirakas are not going to have the halacha obligation of peya. Now the ilu gabemaisetznan. So that's the criterion we find by peya. Uh, has these five criteria. But by the laws of Meister, we learn the Mishnah Masech, this Meister, this is Klal Amr, but Meister, this is the law regarding the tithing, Kol Shu Eichel, whatever is, so here, here, this is what is shared by both Pei and Meister, whatever is an edible food, and the Nishmer, and it's guarded, and the Gedulim, and it grows from the ground, Chayib B'Meister, that you're obligated in Meister, but it has these three criteria. Now the thing is, Vil L'Kitasa Ka'asas, but the fact of this, say that it's, Gathered at one time, and then it's put away to be stored. That lights not that it doesn't tell us by the laws of Meiser. Because as Rashi explains, 
although re really biblically it doesn't even apply to these types of produce. But when the Rabbanan instituted their halacha of meiser, they didn't differentiate between fruit trees and vegetables or different types of species. They made a blanket chiv. And therefore, we find that the halachas of meiser are more expansive even to te'ina biyar. Even though they're not like getasa ka'achas and machnis lakim, still the rabbis made that for the laws of meiser. And therefore, we see it's more expensive than the laws of peya, which, which is excluding these things. It does not have the obligation on those two things. Therefore, we said klal gadol also by the laws of Meisr. Now we understand why it says klal gadol not Mishnah, because Shabbos is more expensive than Shemitah, Shemitah is more expensive than Meisr, and Meisr, according to Bar Kapara, it says klal gadol because it's more expensive than the laws of Meisr. Now we continue, going back to the law of our Mishnah. So we opened up the first case in the Mishnah, kol ha-shechei Shabbos. The guy forgot that there's a, such a thing, like Rashi explains, kasava ain't Shabbos b'ter. He thought there's no such a thing as Shabbos in the term. So how do we understand this case? So the Gemara brings the Rabbi Shmuel Damatavai. They both say that Masnit and Dalach of Mishnah says that if someone forgot the essence of Shabbos, even though he did many Malachas over many Shabbases, that he's going to be chayv only one carbon chatas for all those years that he committed sins, many violations of Shabbos, one carbon chatas. It's told in Betinik Shenishba Lebein Anachim. This is where the famous terminology that we said is introduced, was called Tinik Shenishba. The literal translation is say a, a, an infant that was taken in captivity amongst the Gentiles. That really is the term that we say for someone that never knew about Shabbos. He, well, he never learned about Shabbos in his life. Or, or talking about someone that converted amongst the non-Jews, which Tracy explains, he must have converted in front of three Jews. They just didn't tell him that is the midst of Shabbos, because if he converted by himself amongst the non-Jews, he actually wouldn't be a ger. He needs it the best. But the point is, he was never told. He never had a clue that there was such a thing as Shabbos. That's the case that we're talking about the Mishnah. Okay, that was one mistake that you made. You never learned about the laws of Shabbos. Let's say somebody knew, he recognized, he had learned about Shabbos, and then he ultimately forgot. So then, actually, in such a case, Rabbi Shmuel would hold, that's as if you forgot that today is Shabbos, but you do know the essence of Shabbos. And therefore, Chayim will call Shabbos for Shabbos. Therefore, you can be Chayim for every single Shabbos, which essentially is like the middle case of the Mishnah. Because although you totally forgot that the Shabbos, you knew there was Shabbos. And therefore you know the essence of Shabbos. You just don't know today is Shabbos because you forgot about that. That's not going to exempt you. You're going to be chayim for every single Shabbos, a separate chivat chatz. Now, however, on this interpretation of Rabbi Shmuel, the Gemara asks the following question. How could you say this? Tanan, we learned about the opening case of the Mishnah that said, Hashichich Ikr Shabbos, the way we call this first case, was if someone forgets the essence of Shabbos. But it says, if you forget... Isn't it inferring that you did know at one time and then you forgot? You totally forgot. You, you, you got so uh, off the, the spiritual path that you had no clue such a thing as Shabbos. Only, uh, uh, that's when we're saying you have only one Chamer How are you saying you have every single Shabbos? He says, No. What does it mean that he forgot the essence of Shabbos? It means the it always was forgotten from him. Ikar Shal Shabbos, the essence of Shabbos. But he never knew it at all. That's when he's going to be part with only one Karma Chatz. Okay, so the Gemara asks, wait a second. The Gemara goes through now all the three cases based on this interpretation of Rabbi Shmuel. So what do you tell me? Abel Hikil said Shacha, but let's say he once knew about it. He had learned about it. And then he ultimately forgot about it. So my, what do you tell me? As we had been saying before. So you're going to tell me, Chayv HaKol Shabbos for Shabbos. That then you can be Chayv for every single Shabbos. One Chayv, one Chayv Chatz. Let's say for 30 years, multiplied by the amount of Shabbos in all those years. You tell me he's going to be Chayv for every single Shabbos. Even though he forgot about the essence of Shabbos. He didn't even remember there's such a thing as Shabbos. You tell me he's going to be for each and every one. But then, uh, the Tani, then the middle case of the Mishnah, that tells us, Hayideik or Shabbos. If he knows the essence of Shabbos, he, he knows there's such a thing as Shabbos. And for us, Abdelachas Harbi, Bishabbos is Harbi. And he does many Malachas and many different Shabbos. Where we said he's going to be called Shabbos or Shabbos. He's going to be for every single Shabbos, one Chattas. Because we said he knows that there's such a thing as Shabbos. He just doesn't remember that today is Shabbos. So then why are you saying that case as the case of the liability for every single Shabbos? Say a bigger Chiddush. Listen, you should say what, you're, what we thought was the first case, which you're saying is not the first case. You should say, Hikr, say Shachach. Someone at one point knew that there was such a thing as Shabbos. And then you forgot about the essence of Shabbos. Tell me that over the Yigimichai for every single Shabbos. But that's for sure a bigger Chiddush. Because even over there, you cannot say that the intermediate days is like a idea to differentiate and make a new liability. Because when he has no clue this is the thing of Shabbos, that he should remember in the intermediate days that that was the day of Shabbos. And still you're telling me, Rabbi Shmuel, that he'd be chayev. So, and, and then, the Kosh again, huh, for sure I would know this, the middle case that the Mishnah says, we at least you could say that the intermediate days is an awareness to differentiate, which for sure he knew about that which day was Shabbos. 
So, because he knew that there's such a thing as Shabbos, so why say that case if you could say the bigger chiddush on Hikol Yisrael Shachach? Why would you say the case of that? No, he knows that it's Shabbos. He just forgot the today of Shabbos. So the Gemara says, "You're right." My Hayadei Eker Shabbos. What is the middle case of someone who knows the essence of Shabbos? It means Mishahayi Yadei Eker Shabbos. It means someone who knew about the essence of Shabbos. The and he forgot about it, which is the case that we thought was the first case. Is actually not the first case. It's actually the second case. The second case that says Hayadei Eker Shabbos. It means he did know the essence of Shabbos, and he forgot about it. Then it's Michai Bakol Shabbos for Shabbos. But the Gemara continues on Lamed Beis and says, "Okay, wait a second. Avolay Shachka. But wait, what are you telling me? But if he didn't forget the essence of Shabbos, it's just that he forgot that today's Shabbos, which again we had thought up until now, was the was was the middle case. Which you tell me is not the middle case. You tell me that the middle case actually that he forgot totally that there's such a thing as Shabbos, that and there's Michai in every single one." So, what do you tell me if he never forgot the essence of Shabbos? My, what would that be over there? So, now obviously, you're telling me that Chaim will malacha malacha. They would be liable for every single malacha, which is a discussion in Rashi Tesis. Why would we think that? But the way Rashi explains it is obviously that if you would think that the, that the middle case, what we thought was the middle case of the Mishnah until now, where he, he knows the essence of Shabbos, he just forgot that today is Shabbos, if you would think that he would only have one Chatzas for every single Shabbos, then this should have been quote, wrapped together with the, what you're describing as the middle case. It should have said, someone who knows the essence of Shabbos, and then he forgot that there's such a thing as Shabbos, or someone who even knows the essence of Shabbos, and he did many malachas and many Shabbos. He's going to be, but he forgot that today's Shabbos, he's going to be for every single Shabbos, but it doesn't say that. It says only one case, which you're describing the middle case as what we thought was actually the first case, which was Hayadei Iker Shabbos, he, 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 he knows there's such a thing as Shabbos. And he, and he knows that. He just forgot that today's Shabbos. You're telling me that's the case that he's going to be high for every single Shabbos. But if he didn't forget, if, if, he, if, he, if he knew regarding every single, uh, 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 if he didn't forget that the, the essence of Shabbos, he just forgot today's Shabbos, he's going to be high every single Malacha, because you're telling me, just to explain again, that the, the first case is he never knew about Shabbos in his whole life. That's going to have only one Chabbos. The second case you tell me is that, no, he at one point knew about Shabbos. Now he forgot the essence of Shabbos. And he has no clue about Shabbos anymore, but he once knew. Then you tell him it's every single Shabbos. So wait, what's the case that we thought was the middle case? Which was, if let's say he knows there's such a thing as Shabbos. He didn't forget that. He just doesn't know today's Shabbos. So obviously you tell me that's even more severe. There's Mechav every single Malacha. But then wait a second. At the tummy, instead of learning the third case, Hayyadeh Yeshu Shabbos, he knows that today's Shabbos. And he did many malachas and many shabbasas, unaware that this malacha was forbidden. That chayav will come malacha malacha is mechayv is saying every single malacha. Why are you saying that as the third case of being chayv every every single malacha? Listen, you can say a bigger chiddush. Hayideya ikur shabbos. If someone knows the essence of shabbos, but he didn't know that today is shabbos. He was what's called shigah shabbos, and he was delivered regarding the malachas. And still, that's a huge chiddush because usually if you're made, you're not chayv carbon for those things. Still, you tell me he's mechayv in every single malacha. Even though in truth that every single Shabbos was only one error, but you're telling me that, that would be the case you'd be having every single malacha from the fact that it wasn't taught in the middle case. And Bachashkinha, and for sure the case of when you, your, your, your error was in the malachas and you knew about Shabbos, that, that's many mistakes on every single malacha, which is difficult to understand how we would think that you'd be having every single malacha, but that's obvious from, from the case. So why didn't you say that as a third case? Again, we said three different cases in the Mishnah. One is Chayv, one Chatas. For and no matter how many times you did it, um, how many Shabbos. Second case was, you have one Chattas for every single Shabbos. Third case was, you have every single Malacha, whether it was one Shabbos or many Shabbos. So everything just shifted the way we had thought up until now, the way Rabbi Shmuel explained it. Because Rabbi Shmuel explained, uh, we, we had been explaining it, which actually is going to be the next opinion brought in the Gemara. We thought that it's the first case was, he knew about Shabbos, he forgot about Shabbos, the whole essence of Shabbos. Okay, so then you don't know about Shabbos at all. So it's one error your whole life, one Shabbos. Second case where you can have on every single Shabbos, you know there's such a thing as Shabbos. But every single Shabbos, you made a mistake. You didn't know that today was Shabbos. Okay, that makes sense. And then the third case, so you can have one Shabbos for every Shabbos. Third case was, no, but you know that today is Shabbos. You didn't know this malach was forbidden. So okay, for every single malach, you made a mistake. You can have that many. Problem is, everything shifted now with Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Shmuel said, no, the opening case is that you never knew about Shabbos in your whole life. You were brought up with unawareness of Shabbos. And now you knew and you forgot. You never knew. That's when you have one Chavos. 
So, but then the inference is, but let's say you did know and you forgot. So that's really the case of then you'll be chavin every single Shabbos. So wait a second. And what's with the second case? Oh, that is the second case. Hayudei Shabbos means he at one point knew about it and then he forgot about it. That's the middle case we have every single Shabbos. Okay, so wait, what's the third case? The third case is tell me when you have every single Malacha. Why tell me the case of when you made a mistake in each Malacha? Tell me the case of when you knew about Shabbos and then you forgot about Shabbos. That case, when, 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 when that, that, the, 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 the case, uh, no, that, the middle case. But if you didn't forget about the essence of Shabbos and you made a mistake about today being Shabbos, that should be the third case. Because we thought up until now that was the middle case. But you tell me, no, the middle case is when you forgot about the essence of Shabbos. Again, there's a difference between forgetting the essence of Shabbos and today being Shabbos. It, it, the, the case of forgetting about the essence of Shabbos, that's the middle case. That's you have every single Shabbos. What if you forget, that, let's say you remember the essence of Shabbos. But if you forget that today's Shabbos, you seem to be implying that you have in every single malacha. Let's say that is the third case instead of the case of every single malacha. So again, it might be a little bit complicated in the Cheshman, but that's where the Gemara is at at this point. That should be the third case. Why are you saying everything malach? Well, that should make sense because as many shkagas say a bigger chiddush say, which it's hard to understand that case. But even if you didn't make a mistake in many malachas, you'll still be chayav every single malacha if you know that about the essence of Shabbos. You just forgot the today of Shabbos. So the Gemara says, "Oh, you're right. You're right. We're stuck here by the third case. We're difficult. Why would we say the case of many malachas? What's called shigas malachas bezod and Shabbos? We really should have said shigas Shabbos bezod malachas because according to where we are at this point of the computation." That really should have been that you can be chayv in every single malacha. So Rabbi says the Gemara like this. You're right. Must need in the halacha the Mishnah that the case of when you have only one chattas for let's say your whole life is as we thought up until now. It's kashhekel b'sayv shachach. It's when you knew about it and then you ultimately forgot about the essence of Shabbos, which is really the simple translation. That's the way we made it sound like it said hashicheach ikar Shabbos. You forget the essence of Shabbos. You see, at one point you knew and then you forgot about it. Now with the Rabbi Shmuel, but then what do you do with Rabbi Shmuel that they were saying the halacha is that you never knew about it at all? So there's two ways to describe Rabbi Shmuel. Either they were coming to say a chiddush one way or the other way. So up until now we thought they were saying that that's the only case that you bechayv for one. But whereas if you knew Shabbos and then you forgot to ask Shabbos, you bechayv many more. Now we're explaining actually the other way. No, they agree that hayikul b'sev shachal bechayv only one. The halacha Rabbi Shmuel that he never knew at all is telling us nami ki hikul b'sev shachal dummy. It's also like that you knew and that you forgot about it, and that is that even there you will be chai of one chattas, that there is going to be a liability. Now Rashi points out, so then, why did Mishnah pick the case of Hikob Sev Shachach? According to Rabbi Shmuel, it should have said that you never knew at all, it's to tell you the other way, not to be chai in every single Shabbos. Because you might have thought, you knew at one point Shabbos, now every single Shabbos is a separate error that you're making. No, if you forgot about the essence of Shabbos, so it's one big error, you can be chai only one. But, and that's what Rabbi Shmuel is saying, that a chiddush the other way, that, that never knowing at all is also going to be chayim. This is what they said. Rabbi Shmuel, they both say, it's a filler. Even tinik shenish b'ben anachim, a child who grew up never knowing about Judaism. The geish shenish gana b'ben anachim, or someone converted amongst the Gentiles, never hearing about laws of Shabbos, kehekel of seif shachad, it's like he knew and then he forgot about it, and therefore v'chayim. The chiddush is not, that that's the only case that is only one mistake, but the other cases are going to be more. No, no. If you hikol tzav shachach, which is the first case of the Mishnah, is talking about that you only going to have one chattis for your whole life. Because one error. Now, but Rav and Shmuel that are saying it's even tinik shen are saying that even there it's considered one error too. The fact that you never learned about it, that's one mistake that you made, and therefore you will be have one chattis. But he doesn't disagree with the Mishnah. The Mishnah is still titrated according to as we described, that it had, those three cases are the same as it is. He's just, they're just qualifying that for, for not knowing at all, is also going to be chayv one chattis. But hikot sev shachach is also going to be only one chayv chattis. Now, however, uh, the, the Gemara brings now that actually it's a machlekes. Rabbi Yechim, Rabbi Shem, Malakas, Rabbi they both say that no. Dafka hikot sev shachach. Specifically, if you want at one point new, and then you forgot, then you're going to bring one chayv chattis. But if someone grew up never knowing about Judaism, or someone that convert amongst the non-Jews, never hearing about Shabbos, actually, Pater is going to be exempt from any Chiyav Chattas, which is Rashi explains that Rabbi Yechon and Shlakish, they hold that he never did a Shagaga, a, a carbon, a Chiyav carbon, which we should be able to bring very shortly in the base of Middash, is only for a Shagaga, for an error. But what's called Oyma Mutter, if you're saying that it's permitted, you have no clue that it's forbidden, that's called an Oynas. 
It's not considered an error. It's considered something that's beyond the person's control. It's considered something that he, he, he has no, no liability whatsoever. That's how Rashi explains it. Tais actually disagrees, because actually the Gemara Shulti is going to explain that the Yechon Shlakish are based on a tana called Munbiz, which actually the Gemara explains later on that his opinion is based on a Pasuk. So Tais says it's based on the Pasuk, Rashi says it's based on, on logic of Oyma Mutur is Anusu. But therefore they say it's going to be Pat. With Rabbi Shmuel, they say that no, it's 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 uh, tinnik shenish, but it's like kikum says shachar that you will be mechatas. Bishu Shlokish showed that no, if they never knew, would be completely pot. Now Meisve, Rabbi the Gemara asks on Rabbi Yechon and Rishlokish from the following brayse. Brayse says klal gad ba'amar b'shabes, which essentially opens up with the, this brayse opens up with the, the first case of our Mishnah. A great rule they said regarding Shabbos. Kol shechech ikus Shabbos. Someone forgets the essence of Shabbos. But some malachas have b'shabbos. There's many malachas and many Shabboses. And the Chayav Al-Ach is only going to be liable for one Karma Chattis, again, like we said in the Rish of the Mishnah. Now, says the Brisa, the Brisa comes to explain the case, which that was a Machlech, this Rabbi Yechel Shlokish versus Rabbi Shmuel. Kate said, says the Brisa, what's the case? Talking about Tienik Shenish Balamein Anachim. If there's a child that's taken in captivity amongst the Gentiles, Vigation is Gabin Anachim O Kamer that grows up, uh, that converts amongst the Gentiles, where again, they never knew about the Halach of Shabbos ever. Vasa Malachas Habr Shabbos Habr, they do many Malachas, many Shabbos. In Chayv Alachatas Achas, only Mechayv but one Karma Chatas. Now that the Brice explains. So therefore, let's say Mechayv Al Adam, this person who never learned about Judaism at all. So if let's say he eats blood his whole life, he's Mechayv for Achas for one liability. And so and and, and but places wonders. I mean that's a Pashta Halacha anyway because whoever eats blood is only Mechayv one because there's no differentiations in liabilities in blood like by Shabbos you have many Malachas. Any person not only to make but eats blood his whole life only Mechayv one even if he let's say, became unaware. It's not only if he never knew at all. So the read brings that the Chiddush would be like if he ate on many different trays and, did, and it's prepared many different ways, like the Bishu says later enough, Ayn Alf, Ayn Alf, Ayn Alf, that someone else would be liable for every tray, a separate ha- a liability, even in one lapse of awareness. And that's what we're saying, Tanik would only be liable for one. But the Rajba finds it difficult because, okay, that would explain why we're explaining here the case of blood. But why would you say the other cases is not really teaching us the Chiddush? Well, the Chilabachas, if he ate forbidden fats, one liability his whole life, for idolatry would be one liability his whole life. So to anything that's covered in the Torah would be only one liability for his whole life. Now, Umundus Paita. Umundus actually says that he's not liable for any khatas at all for his whole life. The Tinnik is not going to have any liability. And Makacha Umundus done the Fnei So to Umundus, he went and he, 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 he litigated his case in front of Rebbe He says as follows. He says, Hail amazed We find a passage which actually is interesting, the one exception essentially to the rule of, there is another one, of, of the category we said that the chi of carbon is only generally if someone did a shagaga. However, by shvur sa'edus, if someone knows testimony and he swears that he doesn't know, it says over there, nefesh ki sechat someone is committing a sin, but he hears that they need his testimony, he doesn't say it, he doesn't say there in the Pasuk vanilla that he had a lapse of awareness. It's actually even told about if he did it deliberately, that he'd be chayi v'chatas. There are some exceptions to the rule. Now, but one thing is, although he's deliberate, the Pasuk used the terminology Sechta. So we see that Mezid is called a Chayte. Now, the Shagikar Chayte, that we know all throughout the Torah, it says many times the term of Shagaga regarding that of committing a sin. So we see that both Shagaga and Mezid, error and deliberate, are used with the same wording of Chet. So therefore, that, that makes the following comparison. Ma Mezid, just like when someone commits a deliberate sin, obviously means Shahis Lehidi, have an awareness, because it can only be deliberate if you have what's called premeditated, you meditate at some point on this, you have an awareness. So I've shown you, so too, when someone does a sin by mistake, it means It means that he had an awareness at some point. Now, that's in contrast to Tinsh Shanishba, who never had an awareness, never knew at all, so then yes, he's going to be putter, because he never knew at all, never is going to be putter from Achiev, of Achatis. So it's only Rebbe Kiva says, oh, one bus, Harini Maisev al says, I'm going to add on to your words. In other words, if that's how you want to make a drasha, you want to learn out the laws of Shagagav from Mazin, come, I'll add on to your words, and let's see if it holds water. In other words, he's trying to say, it doesn't, you can't compare Shagagav to Mazin, because he's saying, if you're comparing, let's compare it all the way. And let's see if it really holds true. Let's say like this. Ima Mazin, then let's say like this. If a deliberate sin, shall he say, when someone does a deliberate sin, he say he has the awareness when he's doing it. That's what's called deliberate sin. So I'll show you, are you going to tell me also when someone does a, a, an erroneous sin, he had an awareness when he was doing it? There also should be Chai B'chattas, which obviously that doesn't make sense because then it's not a Shkaga. But, but you're comparing it to Mazin, you should say even as awareness when he's doing it. 
On that Amalai, this is not what we would think that Mundos would answer, and we'll explain this on the next daf. He says, Hen, yes, but Chosh again Shalasafta, and for sure you just added on to my opinion, and he actually supported me. Because actually, the case you described, I actually would say that he would be Chayyab Achatis, which Igmar the next daf is going to explain. How could that be? A Shkaga, that you had an awareness. How does that make a Shkaga? That's amazing, the Red. The Gemara will address that, and Ben Mumbas does hold of that. Which Amalei, we keep it responsive, like we're all wondering, with Varecha, according to your words, in Zikar Shagi. That's not a Shagi. That's amazing. How can you say that? And therefore, he doesn't like Mumbas' opinion. And El Amazed, rather, that would be considered amazing. Okay. That's where that Brysa concludes. Katani Mia, one thing says the Gemara, what we see from the Reisha of that Brysa, when it says Ketza, when it's coming to describe the case of the Reisha of our Mishnah, it said, what is that talking about when he was Shachach Iker Shabbos? It said, Tinnik, it described a Tinnik Shanishba amongst the Gentiles who never knew about Judaism, and still the Bryce is describing that as the case, as Michayev for Achiev of Chatos. Oh, so says the Gemar Bishlam of Rabbi Shmuel, runs down according to Rabbi Shmuel. Then Nicha, that Bryce, it makes sense. Yeah, because they also hold, like we described, that the case of the Mishnah would be that you'd be Chayev for one Chatos, but also Tinnik Shanishba. Now, but Rashi actually addresses a, a difficulty. A different question is, then, why don't we say that the case of the Mishnah is the case of Shachach, is a Tinnik Shenizba? Why, 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 why then do we say in the Mishnah, um, Shachach, uh, 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 he knew about it, then he forgot about it? So that's what Rashi says. The truth is that, like we said in the Mishnah, Hikol Tzav Shachach would also be Chai for one Chathas. The Bryce that picks, let's say, not like the Mishnah, picks Tinnik Shenizba, that he never knew about it, is that because it had to tell us the Chiddush that way, because it's a machlik is Munbaz and Rabbah. Munbaz actually holds that case going to be Pater. So we, what we had to say, that that's also going to be the case of Chayv, one Chathas your whole life, even over there. But the truth is, it's also Hikol B'Sev Shachach, because that's the way we explain it for Rabbi Shmuel. So that's not difficult. So that makes sense according to Rabbi Shmuel. But in Rabbi Yechen, on the Rabbi Shemel Lakish Kash, it's a difficulty. They said that Lacha bin Chayv only one Chathas, but at least a Chathas did Yimichayv is by Hikob Sev Shachach, but they said Tinnik Shanishba has no liability at all. So then we have a difficulty because we see clearly from the Reisha, from the Rabbanon, that they say that you're going to be Chayv one Chathas. According to them, you're going to be Pater totally. So on that, Amachar Rabbi Yechon and Rish Lakish, they would tell you, Loi mi ikem mumbas de Pater, but don't you have mumbas that says that you're going to be Pater? Anad da min ikem mumbas. We say like mumbas, so you're right. So the Gemara brings that this Machlik is Amiram, is a shem say Machlik is Tanoi. The Tanakam that says that a Tinnik Shanishba is Michayev, one chat is like Rabbi Shmuel that says you bring one chat, which it's the same thing as Hikol B'Sayyid It was an error that he never learned about it. And Mumba says you can be Pater. That's like a Birch of Shlakish that says that only if he never knew. But, you know, the, when you can Michayev, one is if you knew and then you forgot. But somebody who never knew would be completely Pater. Now that Igmar continues and says that, okay, my time with the Mumbas. What's the reason of Mumbas? Because as Rashi explains, what do you mean Mumbas explain? He compared Shogi to Mezid. So as she explains, the Gemara's question is that that Binyan Av, what we call a Mamatino, that he's comparing Shogi to Mezid because they both are called Chathas, most definitely he cannot rely on that. You can't make Shogi compared to Mezid because Shogi is the opposite of Mezid. One's premeditated, the other one is not meditated. And then you can't really compare them because Shogi is high of carbon and Mezid is part of a carbon. You can't compare the two of them to qualify the laws of Karbanas from the laws of Mezid. So therefore, that's what the Gemara is asking. What's the reason of Mumbai? Why, why does he really say that you have to have had at least one point in your life in awareness, and if not, if you're like a Tinnik Shanish, you're not going to be Chayim Akar So the Gemara says, because the, based on the Pasuk of Mamibah, the Pasuk says, Tayra Achas Yilacham. There should be one law for you, La Isa Bishkaga, for someone who commits a sin by mistake. So we have this Pasuk, he's talking about the laws of Shaykh. Now the Pasuk, the Pasuk right after that says, and the soul that commits a sin in an outstretched hand means to say if he does it high-handedly, if he does it deliberately. So here we have Hikesh Shagik, the Pasik right before is talking, it's comparing the laws of Shagik regarding which its liability is Khatas. Lamaze it to the laws of when you do delivery, which its liability is cars. So you're right, as Rashi explains, although really Shagik and, and Mazik cannot be compared, but the Pasik is doing what's called a hackish. When you have a Pasik near another one, it's telling you it's comparing the laws one to the other. Oh, so the Torah is comparing it. So then we have to say, what's it comparing Shagi to Mezid? To tell you, Ma Mezid, just like when someone commits a sin deliberately. It means he had an awareness at some point of Shagi. So too, someone that commits a sin by mistake, it means to say that he had an awareness at some point, which it's actually not only at some point, actually what Rebbe said to Mumbaz, it's even during the action, which we'll explain next up, how could that be? 
But it means that you had to have an awareness. But it had to have been that you had an awareness. But a tunic should have been never having an awareness. And then it's not going to be for chatas. That's the source for, uh, for, for, for Munbath. Now, what do the Rabbanan do with this Pasuk Tarach? They're not using it to make this teaching because they hold that by Shai you're going to be chayv, even if you never had, never had an awareness. So they're obviously not comparing it to Meizid in that context. So it says the Gemara of Rabbanan, Hai Tarachas, this Hekish of Tarachas, meaning from Shai to Meizid, my Abdilay, what do they do with this? So they have a whole different uh, teaching. Uh, and that's the end of the Daf. But again, they don't have that to compare to say that Shagi has to have an awareness and therefore even Tanik Shanis would be Chayav Achatis according to them. So the says the Mabayi Lu, they need to draw as follows. The Kudemakri Le Yibishub and Lebi Lebrei. The Yibishub and Lebi taught to his son. This passage that we're quoting over here is by the Karbanis of Avaydah Zah. Someone committed a sin regarding idolatry by mistake. It says in Parash Shlach that he has to bring a Karban. What's the Pasuk? Like we said before, it says, Tara Achas Yilacham Ha'isa B'Shkaga. There should be one law for all you that commit a sin by mistake, that you have to bring a carbon chatz. Now, Uksiv, it says earlier there in that parasha, to continue from Samach Tesem Al, there in the parasha, which is obviously, like we're saying, talking about the sin of idolatry, it says, V'chis Sishku. Someone's going to make an error. V'lei Sastras Kala Mitzvah Se'elin. He's not going to do all these mitzvahs. Now, what do you mean all these mitzvahs? You're talking about one mitzvah, that of Avodah Zara. So the Gemara in Harius and Dav Chesem Al explains, yes, it's referring to Avodah Zara, because Idolatry is equivalent to all the mitzvahs in the Torah. So, Eskola Mitzvah is referring to, like we said, this parish is talking about idolatry. Now, the thing is, it says the Pasuk later on, which is the Pasuk we just mentioned before, of Taira Achas. Now, what, what, what do I mean, Taira Achas? That is coming to tell you, Kol Ha Taira. All the Taira, meaning regarding any sin that a person does by mistake, that is even liable to Karmachatas, that's included here in the Pasuk. How so? So, we're saying that it says, uh, that's one Pasuk. And again, a previous Pasuk told us that it's Tumar of Zara, because it says, Kalamitz is Eila. And also, when it says Tarachas, we're saying that all of the Torah has this law, which is, Uksiv, it says in the Pasuk, the next Pasuk, it says, If someone goes and commits a sin deliberately, which again, we're saying is Tumar by the laws of Avaid Zara. But what we're telling you over here is, Hukshu Kula. We're equating all the karbanas, when someone commits a sin by mistake, on any sin, because we said, including the word taira achas, is including the whole taira. So it's not only talking about the laws of Avodah Zarah, it's talking about every karban, is it being equated la Avodah Zarah to, to uh, when someone uh, commits a sin and he has to bring a karban for Avodah Zarah, which is, Malahal, and just like over there by Avodah Zarah, its karban is only for a complete sin, which is Dover, Shechayav Mazda in the Karis, Veshikagas Echatas, for Avodah Zarah, you're bringing a carbon when you do it by mistake, is for something that when you do it deliberately, you have cars, because that's why this explains the, what, according to Rabban, why this Pasuk is near this Pasuk. Why do we say, and it says, near the Pasuk of Shkaga, to tell you that yes, when are you going to be high for the Shkaga, when it's also going to have its deliberate uh, violation, which is going to be high the liability of cars. Oh, and then it says, which is comparing the whole Tarot by its carbon, which tells you, Afko, so to the whole Torah, you don't bring a karbachat, it's only on Dabr Shechayav and Azdeh, the car is only something that if you did it deliberately, you would get karas, dying at a young age, and if you do it by mistake, that's what the Liman is coming to tell us. But again, it's not coming to tell us like Mumbaz to say that you're going to be exempt, like on the Timic Shenishba, if you never had Kodi Yidi like Mezid, no, it's coming to tell us that the liability of karas, of a carbon, is only if it's something that has a chiv of karas. Of, of karas. Like by Abba Dizar, which the parish Tumah Malal and Dabashakim and Zenikos, Rikas and Chattas, I've called Dabashakim and Zenikos, Rikas and Chattas, that's the only time you can be chayyab for uh, a carbon, but something that if you violate it does not have a liability of curse, it actually does not have a liability of a, uh, a carbon Chattas with that too. Some of the things we spoke about in today's Dab, Shabbos Dab, Samaches, was we started the seventh parak, parak Kalal Gadol, and we said Kalal Gadol Amr B'Shabbos. We said a great rule regarding Shabbos which are three cases of Shagaga, with different halachic ramifications. Case number one was if someone, and, and the ultimate conclusion of the Gemara is like this according to all opinions, whoever forgets about the essence of Shabbos, he has no clue that there's such a thing as Shabbos. And he does many malachas and many Shabbos, he's been chayat for one chatas for his whole uh, uh, error. For all the time. Which the reason is because it's one mistake. Which is the one mistake of the essence of Shabbos? That's the first case in the Mishnah. Then we said the second case was he knows about the essence of Shabbos. He knows such a thing as Shabbos. 
Now, he does many malachas on many Shabbasas. So he says, Michai, one chattas on every single Shabbos. Why? Because what was his error? He knows there's a thing of Shabbos. His error was regarding today, what we call Shigya Shabbos. That's the one terminology we call it, Shigya Shabbos, but it's the error that he didn't know today was Shabbos. So every single Shabbos, like the Gemara, like we explained from Rashi, so we'll see in the Gemara, that's the Gemara increases, that there's a, the, uh, a new lapse of awareness every single Shabbos. And therefore, for the fact that he didn't know it was Shabbos, every single Shabbos. And you knew that the Malachas was forbidden. So every Yichayev, one Chatz is every single Shabbos. Case number three was, no, you know that today is Shabbos. So this is the more practical, let's say, for most who's learning Daf Yainim, who's learning this Black Gemara, he knows it's Shabbos. But the thing is, he does many Malachas on many Shabbos. He's Yichayev on every single Av Malacha, because it's where you know it's Shabbos, but you didn't know this Malacha was forbidden. So you never knew about it for three years. No, I never knew. I grew up in in in, in Beis Yaakov and in Chayde. No one ever told me this had been. So then the person we have one carbon for every Av Malacha that he does for his whole life for uh, until he becomes aware of it. If he forgets again, then we have again. Now that the Mishnah then qualified that if you do many Malachas, that's what's called Me'ain Malacha Achas. You may have one Chatas. That's if let's say those are two Teladas of one Av, as we'll learn about later on. Then you can be chayev for only one. That's why we call it in the third case of kol av malacha. It really means every malacha, but we say av malacha because if let's say it's two two thousand one av, actually you would be only chayev one chatz. So then the gemara opened up saying, so okay, so my taima tani klal gadol. What call klal gadol? So the gemara says you can't say because there's another klal that is smaller. So therefore, and that would also be a good answer for shemitah. That's why we call the first one klal gadol because it does not say gadol by meiser and and meiser does have a later cloud that is smaller than that, so why wouldn't you say over there? You can't say because it's Abbas and Teladis, because according to Bar Kapara, that he does say God by Maisa, and Maisa does not have Teladis. So rather, the third approach to Gemara says is that if you have a rule that its punishment is greater than something else that also has a cloud, so that's when we say cloud God. So why is that? So, okay, Shabbos is called God because it's by Talish and Mechubra in contrast to Shemitah. Which is only by Mechubah. So it's Gadol than Shviz. Shviz is Gadol than Maisha, because Shemitah is even by Michael Behema. Maisha is only by Michael Abba. And then according to Bar Kapar, the Maisha is also Gadol. So that's because it applies by Te'ina Yarek in contrast to Peya, which therefore that's considered Gadol over the laws of Peya. And then the Gemara also qualified Halachas and the exclusions of Peya, the five criteria. We said, what does that mean? That has to be Oichel and Nishmer and so on and so forth, with the Gemara entered parenthetically just to show that Peya has. Has 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 uh, more exemptions than 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 Meiser, which again, that therefore Meiser is more expensive, and therefore we call Godel over that of Pei. There were the machlekes regarding the opening case of the Mishnah. Mishnah, like we said, said the first case, the ratio was was Hashichich Ikr Shabbos, which uh, if actually there was the Mishnah was talking about if he was um, the Mishnah called a Hashichich, if someone was uh, forgot the, the essence of Shabbos, he's Chayv one Chatz, right? So then the question was. What's the halacha which is called a tinik shenishba? So, the, the case of the Mishnah, as we even ultimately conclude in according to Rabbi Shmuel, everyone agrees, it's the one where he knew, he learned about it, then he forgot there's such a thing as Shabbos. So then we say, what's if he never knew it in his whole life? It's called a tinik shenishba. So Rabbi Shmuel says, yes, you can be chayab, but one chatis, that one error that you never learned about. So you can be chayab one chatis. And that's what he said, al kapanim because to answer the question, so why do we say that as the case of the Mishnah, which is even the bigger Chiddush? Yeah, because we wanted to say that Yoda uh, Ulub that there is not going to be every single Shabbos, and we have one for his whole life, because he got the essence of Shabbos. But that even would apply to Tinnik Shnish Batu. Yoda Vashachach should have done Tinnik Shnish going to be Pater, because as Rashi explains, that Oymer uh, Mutter is considered Oymus. He didn't know it's anything wrong. It's not considered Shkog, it's considered Oymus. So then the Gemalt ultimately concluded that actually Machlegis Tanoim. Rabbi Kiva, which that's the Rabbanan, whole like Rabbi Shmuel, and Mumbaz is like a Birch Meshlokis that holds that a Tinnik Shanishba is going to be Pater, he's not liable for all the sins he committed his whole life. So you must say, what's the reason of Mumbaz? You can't say because of Chatz, because you can't really consider, you can't really on your own compare on a Binyan Ava Mamatzin or Shegi Tamez. So that he says is because it's actually a Hekish. The Tyra compares them, where he says you can be Pater if you never had a idea like a Tinnik Shanishba. Is based on the hekish of that says in the pasuk. It says Torah Achas and the next pasuk says Vanefesh 
etc. Biyad Rama, which is B'Mezid, to compare this Shagaga to Mezid. Just like Mezid, he had a idea, obviously, Mezid is he had an awareness. Av Shagig is also there was awareness. Now, in contrast to Tanish Shanishba, that never having awareness is going to be Pater. Now, you're right, but we're going to explain on the next daf that the halacha actually would be, as Rabbi Kiva responded, even the Yidi B'Shas Maisa, somehow Munbaz explains that to be also as a Shagig to be Chayef Achatz. Now, the Rabbanu disagree. What do they do with the drush of the Smuchen? That's coming a different teaching. That that Pasig is coming by the Chatz of a Dizar. And previously it said, Kalam Elam, and it says, Taira Achas, Kalam Elam comes to tell you that it's of a Dizar. And then it says, Taira Achas tells you, Lachal Taira is going to have this law of the Chatz. What's it coming to say? Oh, we're comparing the whole Taira to the Chatz of a Dizar. What do you see? Avay Dizaram. This is the word al uh, th- That's what the smich sakra is coming to the Yad Rama to tell you. Just like Avaydazar by Bemezid, which is what this Pasik is coming to tell you, you can be Chayv Akaris. So to every Shkaga, the whole Torah that you Chayv Achatas is also going to be specifically only if you Chayv Karis, when you do it deliberately, that's when you do it by mistake, that you can be Chayv Achatas. That's the Pasik telling you it's not coming to compare Shaggy to Mezid, say just like Mezid had a Yediyah, so to Shaggy has a Yediyah. No. That has nothing to do with being Yediyah. Even if you didn't have a Yediyah, like the Rabban, like if you keep a hold, you can be Chayyab Achatas as a Tinnik Shanishba. This comparison to that Pasik is only telling you the, the criterion for the Allah of Shagaga. What type of Shagaga? What type of sin? You can be Chayyab for a Shagaga. A Karb Achatas, it's only be that on that sin that if you did deliberately, you be Chayyab for the liability of cars. That's just coming to teach us. That's what the Smechas Akras come in Kuntra Thank you for any time for hosting us.